Solving a Robbery Using Forensic Science Techniques Forensic science uses a lot of modern biology techniques, and today we will walk you through one of the main techniques to identify individuals based on their DNA. Miss Melissa Arthur woke up disoriented and confused on her living room floor. She discovered her diamond necklace was missing and reported the robbery to the police. She is 29 years old and in good health. She lives alone and has no pets. The maid had completely cleaned the apartment that morning. The necklace was still in her jewelry box after the maid left. Was this a robbery or did she misplace the necklace? There are three potential suspects if she was robbed. Ms. Francine Lamarck was a close friend to Melissa for many years. She had a separate key to her apartment. She was caught kissing Melissa's boyfriend, Joseph Park, last week. Ms. Lamarck is a songwriter and owns a dog. Suspect 2, Mr. Joseph Park, has been dating Melissa for the past two years. He also has a separate key to her apartment. He was caught kissing Francine Lamarck last week. A neighbor overheard Mr. Park and Melissa fighting last week. Mr. Park is an actor and owns an orange cat. Suspect 3, Ms. Marla Johnson, was a co-worker with Melissa. Melissa received a job promotion that Ms. Johnson also wanted. Ms. Johnson does not have a key to her apartment. She is a TV talk show host and owns a Netherland Dwarf Rabbit. An investigation of the crime scene revealed. Melissa was found unconscious on the living room floor next to a coffee table. The door was not forced open. The coffee table had a glass of wine on it. A bottle of wine was in the kitchen, and a bag of white powder was found in the trash can. A chemical analysis of the wine revealed that the wine contained ketamine. The bag of white powder was analyzed to be ketamine as well. Therefore, Miss Arthur was unconscious due to poisoning. She drank the toxic ketamine mixed with wine and likely became unconscious within a few minutes. Of the physical evidence collected, a clear fingerprint was lifted off the wine glass she drank from. However, the bag of powder and wine bottle had no prints. But this is suspicious since fingerprints are left on glass surfaces. If she was drinking by herself, why would she wipe her fingerprints off the bottle? Within the bag of poison, a hair was caught in the zip seal. Compare the microscopic images of hair samples from different animals. What type of hair was caught in the bag? Fingerprints left at a crime scene are reliable pieces of evidence because every fingerprint is distinctive and different from another. There are three major types of fingerprints, arches, whirls, and loops. They are identified by looking at the main pattern within the fingerprint. The fingerprint from the wine glass is a whirl. It does not match the victim's fingerprints, so it must belong to someone else. This print matches suspect's two fingerprint. Mr. Park must have handled the glass at some point. However, he regularly visited the victim's apartment, so finding his fingerprints on the wine glass is not necessarily incriminating evidence. A DNA analysis of evidence reveals additional information. Every individual has a unique DNA pattern except for identical twins. DNA is found in almost every cell in our body. The evidence DNA sample needs to match the DNA of a suspect or a victim. When blood, hair, or other cells are present at a crime scene, the DNA is collected and extracted. The DNA samples are then amplified using PCR to make many copies of the sample. The PCR products are separated using gel electrophoresis. And the DNA is then analyzed by comparing the evidence DNA to that of the suspects or the National FBI database to ultimately identify the individual. Polymerase chain reaction, also called PCR, is a DNA amplification technique that can make millions of copies from one single DNA molecule. Within just a few hours, a DNA sample can be amplified into billions of DNA copies. This yields enough DNA to do a gel electrophoresis analysis. 
The term agarose gel electrophoresis can be broken down to explain the meaning of the technique. Agarose is a substance that is found in seaweed and is used to make the gel. The gel itself is used to separate out different sized pieces of DNA when an electric current is run through the gel. And phoresis means the movement of something. In this case, DNA moves by electricity. Agarose gel electrophoresis uses electricity to separate a mixture of DNA pieces by size. It uses the agarose gel, which is a polymer that has different sized holes. DNA is naturally negatively charged and will move towards a positive electrode when a current is run through the gel. Smaller pieces of DNA can move faster and farther through the gel. After making the agarose gel, place it into the gel box. Carefully add enough buffer to cover the gel. Take the micropipette and adjust it to the desired volume. Then begin to load the gel with the samples. Always use a fresh tip with a new sample to avoid cross-contamination. Once all the samples are loaded, turn on the electric current to run the gel. Watch the DNA samples move through the agarose gel and separate into specific bands. A DNA gel shows DNA bands of specific sizes. Each band represents DNA pieces of a single size. The unique DNA fingerprint is a pattern of all the DNA bands from a single DNA sample or individual. Immediate family members will have similarities in the DNA banding pattern. To match DNA samples, every single band within the pattern must be the same, aka a perfect match. Which DNA sample is the perfect match to the evidence DNA? Remember, every single band needs to match. Suspect 2 is a perfect match. Is this robbery still suspicious? What is your conclusion? Who stole her necklace? Based on all the facts discovered during the case investigation, the police have concluded that Joseph Park must have administered the ketamine in the wine and stolen the necklace.